Welcome to the shop, my friend Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I've got one of my most requested builds, some Saiyan armor. And what's great about this particular project is I have free PDF templates that you can download over on my website. So if you plan on making your own armor set, what I would recommend to do would be to watch this video all the way through. See how I take these templates, how I manipulate them, and I get this armor to fit me, because everyone's different. So that way, when you download those PDF files, you can kind of see exactly how you're gonna make that armor fit you. Now this armor is of course made all out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials, and that is a fantastic way to support me and my channel by going through the links that are in the description section and picking up some HD foam. Not only is my foam fantastic, but that continued support allows me to build awesome things like this and show you how to do it. Now with this particular armor set, it's going to be a two-part video series. Part one is going to go over all of the construction and the clean paint job. Part two is going to go over battle damage and cell shading. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now I want to show you what it takes to put this Saiyan armor together. So let's go ahead and get started. I take the templates that I created on my Bristol board and transfer that onto some 10 millimeter HD foam. These pieces are going to consist of part A and part B and make sure to reverse and flip them for both sides. When starting a new project, I always sharpen my knife and I make sure to press all the way through the foam into the cutting mat itself. That will give me the cleanest cut possible. The thing to note here is whether you're using a utility knife or a bandsaw, all the cuts need to be at a 90 degree angle. Now my HD foam takes heat really well, and you can actually do most of the manipulations just by hand. But if you wanted a more complex curve to the piece, you could actually use a foam anvil. I just use a plastic baseball bat that has been vice gripped into the side of my desk. And what that will do is allow me to heat up the foam and then press it onto this and pull it in two different directions while I'm stretching out the middle. That'll give a nice complex curve to this entire shape. So let me go ahead and show you that process. Remember when heating foam to always wear your respirator and do this in a well-ventilated area. After the foam has been sufficiently heated on either side, it can then be pulled and stretched against the top of the bat. Pulling and stretching the foam in multiple directions simultaneously is what allows this foam to have this unique curve. The same heating and stretching process can then be done for the sides or part B as well. Now my recommendation is for part A and part B to not line up. There's actually an overlap that's going to give this armor some volume. To adhere the two part A pieces together, I'm going to be using some weld wood contact cement. This adhesive is going to be applied to the central seam on either side and a hair dryer is used to speed up the dry time. After the contact cement has become tacky, these two pieces can be firmly pressed together to create the chest armor. To put the parts A and B together, I start by marking the overlap with a pencil. This process allows me to make sure that I get contact cement exactly where I need it. I start by applying the corner of part A to the corner of part B. I also added a little bit of Bob Smith super glue to help with adhesion. After that it's set up, I overlaid part A onto part B. This will allow the pec armor to stand out and have a little bit more separation from the side pieces. I could then repeat the process of attaching the chest armor to the side armor on the opposite side. The pattern for the armor that covers the abdomen is traced onto some 6mm HD foam. And while I have the pattern in place, I go ahead and mark where all of the detail ribs are eventually going to line up. If you didn't want to add the additional ribs to your armor, you could make this piece out of 10mm foam and do the heat and score method instead. Now I'm going to mark where part B overlaps onto part C. This is going to round over the front of the armor It can definitely be changed to match your personal body type. Bob Smith super glue is used to tack down the corners and notice how I line up part B and part C all the way across. Now you can see how it's starting to curve the front of the armor. The top point to part C can now be lined up with the middle of the chest armor and marked with a pencil. So if you need to let the abdominal section of this armor out a little bit more or bring it in, now's a perfect opportunity to recreate part C so that it fits you. After part C has been checked to fit and I'm fine with how it fits me, I can then use some contact cement and more Bob Smith super glue to lock it into place. And this has been actually a really tricky part for me because normally when I'm just making armor for myself, I can continue to hold it up to me and make it fit me. This type of a modular template system where it fits more people or different body types has definitely been a challenge. 
So I'm satisfied with the curve and fit of my abdominal armor section, and now I can start making and applying the ribs. These inch and a quarter strips are measured and cut out of some six millimeter foam. Because there is a slight angle from the bottom of the armor to the pec, each one of these strips needs to be marked and cut out individually. At this point, I'd also recommend to write on the back the order and placement for each piece so you don't get them mixed up. Now when I got to the very top where parts A and B connect, these angles were a little bit tricky. But these cuts don't really need to be perfect because later on I'm going to be using some half round dowels to cover up all these seams. Before I attach all of these ribs, I round over all of the edges with a smooth sanding drum. Now I don't remove a lot of foam, just enough to knock down the sharp corner to give it a more professional look. After all the sanding had been completed, I can then use a heat gun to smooth out the surface. Here you can definitely see a difference between these two examples. To adhere the ribs to the armor, I start by applying some contact cement to part C. Now if you notice, I don't go all the way to the edge. To keep this build nice and clean, I left enough room for some super glue. This double adhesive method is kind of the best of both worlds. The contact cement may give a little bit, but the super glue makes sure the edges are nice and tight. And after all the ribs have been glued on, you can see how the contour of the front of this armor is really starting to come together. To start the fabrication on the back, I'm going to trace part D onto some 10mm HD foam. Part E needs to be transferred next, but you can see on my template here where part D is going to overlap on top. So I transfer part E onto some 6mm HD foam while also marking where part D is going to adhere to it. And just like the front, this gives me the opportunity to mark all the rib lines for the back. Again, if you weren't going to do the detail ribs, you could probably also make this piece out of 10 millimeter foam and do the heat and score technique again. Just like before, I'm using some heat and my plastic baseball bat to curve part D. Now this piece can be glued to part E, and you can see by having those registration lines, it makes it really easy to line up. I heat up and roll the sides of part E, that way it can start to conform to the shape of my body. Now for part D to keep the curves that I needed to have, I'm going to add some strips of 2mm foam to the back side. These strips are going to be added in a crisscross fashion, that way the foam curves from side to side and has a slight curve at the top. And while I have some 2mm strips handy, I go ahead and glue some to the inside of the chest armor as well. That'll make sure these two sections on either side will have a gradual curve back and conform to my chest. Now I can go ahead and cut some additional strips of 6mm foam to act as the detail ribs for the back. Just like the front side, these strips are also cut, sanded, and glued into place. Notice though that I'm only gluing down the middle, I'm not gluing down the sides yet. And that's because once I figure out how this armor conforms to my body, I can then cut these strips and glue them down. The strip that's at the very top right under part D could be a little bit tricky, but just take your part D template and trace it onto there for a better fit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because the seam is going to be covered up with a half round dowel. Next I'm going to cut some strips of 6mm foam. These are going to attach the front armor to the back, so you may need to modify the size so that it better fits you. I glued about 2.5 inches of the strip to the back of the chest piece, lining it up with the top detail. So at this point I have the chest piece and the back piece pretty much figured out, at least for their base structures. And now is when you want to fit this armor to you. So go ahead and grab a friend because you're going to actually need to hold this armor up to your body. And to give you kind of where I'm at with this, I'm about 5'7", about 180 pounds. So that'll give you a decent scale as to where this armor is right now. Which is why there's a lot of additional material on the sides and on the top, because I wanted this to be able to fit more people. So if you're bigger than me, or if you're smaller than me, obviously you're gonna scale this PDF up or down to fit you. A couple other things that you can do that are modular with this, in case you're really wide or really tall, you could add like additional spacers in between the pecs. If you're really tall, you could add additional inches down below. But there are some road maps that you wanna look for as far as where the Saiyan armor lines up on you. So at first, you want this right below your clavicle at the top, and you want the bottom of the armor right above your belly button. These are not attached yet, and that's because that's gonna determine how far up or down this sits on your body. So the first thing that I would do would be to take your back piece, put it on the back, and see exactly where these straps are gonna glue in on the back side.
After that, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what your side seam is. And you want that to line up pretty much with the middle of your armpit, which is why the ribs have not been glued down yet. Once I figure that out, I'm gonna actually cut these back about four inches. And so that's gonna be my side seam. And on this side, I'm gonna have room for Velcro so I can get in and out of it. And on the opposite side, I'm actually gonna glue that straight to the chest piece. So go ahead, grab your friend, figure out where your straps are gonna go, where your side seam is gonna go, and then we'll jump back into the build. So figuring out my side seam, I can now mark that and see exactly how much needs to be cut away. The additional foam on part B can now be cut away, and on my left side, part B is glued on to part E, making sure to have about a three inch to four inch overlap. With the curve of this side of the armor figured out, I can now mark, cut, and glue all of the ribs down. When you get to the rib at the top, just cut it to somewhat match the arm hole. Again, this is going to be covered up with a half round later on. A little bit of super glue is added to the end of each rib and then the armor is pressed down so each one of these has a snug fit. I cut away the foam from the opposite side to match the curve of the arm hole. And since this side of the armor is going to have the velcro so I can get in and out, the ribs are going to be cut back far enough for it to fit. I picked up some 4 inch wide velcro off of Amazon because I wasn't sure exactly how much of it I was going to utilize. In this case, I cut about an inch off of this side. Now, even though this is a sticky backed Velcro, I went ahead and added a little bit of super glue just to have that double adhesive method. For the hook side of the Velcro, I decided not to cut it. I just added a little bit of super glue and pressed it into place. And as you can see, the seam lines up great and there's enough surface area that it's gonna hold fine. I cut a few more strips of six millimeter foam. These are gonna be cut into segments and used for the straps at the top. Just like the ribs, each one of these is going to be rounded over with a rotary tool and a heat gun before being glued into place. Now again, because everyone's a little bit different size, I started off with full strips in the front, and then worked my way to the back. The last strip here is just marked, cut to fit, and then glued into place. Because there's a little bit of inconsistency of these strips lining up with the strap, I go ahead and take my rotary tool and smooth out the edge. Now I can take my rotary tool and I'm going to start refining all the edges on the armor. All these are going to have a gradual slope to the edge, giving a good transition for the half round dowels I'm going to use. Now again, this part of the process is not a necessity, it's just something I wanted to do to add a little bit more volume to the armor. You can still have this armor being more flat and still add your half round dowels to cover up your seams. I go ahead and heat seal the foam and now we're ready for the dowels. So I've assembled the chest armor and I used my rotary tool to round over some of the edges and now it's time to apply some half round dowels. These are going to be used all around the outside of the different armor segments and for this particular build I figure you're going to need two packs of 15 millimeter and one pack of 20 millimeter. Now what's great about my dowels, they come two to a pack, but each one of those is 36 inches in length so I can have more of a continuous run, which means less seams, less segments to glue together for an overall cleaner build. So let's go ahead and add the half round dowels to the armor. I'm going to start by applying the 20 millimeter HD foam half round dowel to the bottom. I start off on the right side where the Velcro is and then work my way across the front. When I get to the central seam on the left side, I go ahead and mark and cut the rest of the dowel off. I can then take my other dowel that hasn't been cut yet, match it up with this one and continue to work my way around the bottom of the armor. And if you need to, you could always dremel this dowel down a little bit to match the other one for a better transition. I'm going to start by applying the 15 millimeter half round dowel to the top of the chest. This dowel is going to start in the corner of the pec armor and work all the way around the top of the armor as a single continuous piece. So on the dowel I'm just using a little bit of super glue and following the outermost edge of the armor. Now this process is a little time consuming but you want to go slow because you want all of the angles for this dowel to line up properly. I continue to wrap the dowel around to the opposite side. Once I get over here, I can cut it flush and get ready for my next piece. This next strip will wrap all around the bottom of the pec armor. The angle for this is cut to match the top piece, and then just like before, super glue is added and I slowly work my way around the bottom of the armor. You can see where I dremeled a slight transition between the two armor segments. This gives a really cool detail to the outside of the armor, while also making it easier to glue this strip down. 
Once I get to the opposite side, it's also matched up, cut to fit, and glued into place. For the dowel in the center of the pack armor, it's cut at a slight angle and then glued as an overlap onto the piece that's already there. More glue is applied and they can be pressed down onto the lower dowel. This same cut and glue process is also applied to the dowels on either side of the ribs. For the side seam that has the velcro, the dowel on this side is also applied just like the top of the chest. It conforms to the armor for the top of the arm hole and then is bent and glued down the side. For the dowel on the opposite side, it covers the seam for part B and part E. Now to move on to the back, we're going to have a single dowel that starts in the corner, wraps around the top of part E, and then all around the top of part D. The angles on this piece aren't as tricky as the front, so just follow the outside line of the armor. And here you're going to have one more strip that's going to wrap around the bottom of part D to help cover that seam. To seal my armor after a light heat treatment, I'm going to be using a spray-on Plasti Dip. I'm going to be applying two to three light coats of Plasti Dip over the entire surface. After the Plasti Dip had been allowed to cure, I then added a light coat of Valspar spray paint over the top of this. Now this is just an off-white, but the big thing to note here is that it's a flat, and that's important because I'm going to be hand painting acrylics on top of this. If you're applying any type of a spray paint to a sealed EVA foam, you want to make sure not to do it too thick because it'll have a tendency to crack on you. But a light dusting like this will actually grab onto acrylics really well. Plus, it's changing that color of the Plasti Dip from black to more of a neutral, which is important because I'm going to be going with whites and golds. So let's go ahead and jump into the painting process. Just to give my additional paints a base, I'm going to start off with an application of Liquitex Heavy Body Parchment. This is applied with a 1 inch mop brush over the entire surface of the white parts of the armor. White's a tough color to deal with, especially when you're adding shadows to it. I started off by mixing a little bit of the Mars Black in with the parchment and hand painting that into the recesses, but I wasn't really happy with the look I was getting. So I'm going to switch over to my airbrush for the shadows, and I'm going to use Vallejo brand Black Surface Primer and Createx White Opaque. Both of these paints are mixed into a cup with reducer. This will help the paint flow through the airbrush a little bit better. When I start with my airbrush, I'm just going in and outlining each individual armor segment. At this point it looks like it's a little too much, but it's not, because I'm going to be layering on top of it. Before I add those layers though, I use my airbrush to splatter to break up the surface color. These tiny little imperfections and breakups make the surface more interesting to look at, especially on a color like white. After my combined gray color had dried, I could then go in with some Createx Opaque White. Now this airbrush paint was thinned out because I didn't want to cover up all the interesting hue shifts underneath. Now if you don't have an airbrush that's no problem, you can still go in with your rattle can spray paint for this process. And in the end I feel I didn't overdo it, there's still enough variations in the color to make the armor look interesting and not just be white. Now it's time to work on the gold sections of the armor, and I'm going to start off by applying some Liquitex Iridescent Bright Bronze. Now here's where I kind of messed up because originally I was going to paint all of this yellow like in the anime, but then at the last moment decided to go for more of a metallic gold. So what I should have done was mask all this off and apply a red primer underneath. That would have definitely helped when layering all of these metallics. This bronze is my base layer for the gold. It's going to look great in the shadows and on the sides, and the gold I'm going to add is going to act more as my highlight. But at this point I had already started, so I just added two or three layers of the bright bronze, and honestly it looked pretty good, it did have a really cool metallic sheen. For my first layer of gold, I'm going to be using Utrecht brand Iridescent Gold. This paint is a semi-opaque, so it's not really going to cover all that well, it's just adding an iridescent gold to the color that's already underneath. But here you can see just like the white, having that bronze as a base has multiple different hues going on at the same time, so it visually looks more interesting. 
As my final pass on these areas, I'm going to be using Vallejo brand Polish Gold. Now this paint is fairly opaque, so I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm using it to highlight more of the middle of the abdominal armor and the sides. That way when an artificial or natural light is shined onto this armor section, you're going to see highlights in multiple areas. This same highlight process is also applied to the back ribs as well. To create more of a contrast between the ribs, I'm going to be adding a mixture of Utrecht brand Burnt Sienna and Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Antique Gold. It's not a huge difference, but it's just enough to give it a decent separation. So you all can see the steps that I took to create my own Saiyan armor. And again, this armor is not just for the physically fit, it is for everybody. And the templates are absolutely free, so download those from my website, print them off, modify them, and make your own. And if you are building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Now, this is just one particular variation of armor from the Dragon Ball universe that I plan on creating. So if that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button. and. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.